Hi everyone, I'm Amy Johnson Crow, and I have a treat for you today. I have with me Judy Russell, the legal genealogist, an absolute delight. And when I asked Judy if she would agree to being interviewed, and she's like, sure, what do you want to talk about? And I'm like, anything you want to talk about, because you know everything. So, no. <laughs> so, we, so we, we narrowed it down to a topic that is, I think, Im important we, we need to consider, and that is the ethics of genetic genealogy. Um, it's so easy to buy a kit and just send off our spit and, and get results, but, but there are really some ethical considerations we need to consider, so. There's, there's no question. I mean, the fact of the matter is that, that we are potentially impacting a group of people that we're not accustomed to dealing with as genealogists. I mean, we're really good at people who've been dead for 300 <laughs> years. Mm -hmm. We're not real good about dealing with the living. Right. And that's the reality of DNA testing, is that the, the secrets that are being uncovered, and mm -hmm. they are uncovered all the time, mm -hmm. are secrets that impact people who are living today. Right. So these are people whose, whose lives can be disrupted, mm -hmm. people whose sense of identity okay. can, be, can be very much impacted. And one of the important things is to try as hard as we can to make sure that nobody tests without truly informed consent. Mm -hmm. And that, that's more than just, yeah, I know what a DNA test is. It's understanding the implications of right. the test, what it can show. Mm -hmm. the, the reality, I think, is that, that most people who test don't stop and think that, um, it may disclose that a grandparent isn't the biological grandparent right. or that a parent isn't right. the biological parent or there's a sibling out there they didn't know about. Mm -hmm. And that is an important element yeah. to be considered. Do they know, for example, whether they have Native American blood? Is that part of who they are? And are they going to be distressed mm -hmm. if they find out they're not? Right. Do they... You know, do they think they're Jewish and now they're finding out there's no Ashkenazi in their background? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How are they going to handle that? Right. Right. So these are, these are questions that, that I think it's important that everybody think about, understand, be aware of, mm -hmm. and not sign that release right. without really stopping to think. Right. Now, certainly, and, and you alluded to this, people taking the test and all of a sudden they discover that they have a half sibling or that they have an uncle that that they didn't know about before. What, what does a, a person do in that situation where they have discovered this and they've maybe tried to make contact with this person because that, that other person has, has tested, they, they, they've they mm -hmm. had the match, but there isn't a response. What? Yeah. The, the, the reality is, and, and this is one where, where we get, we sometimes let our enthusiasm run away with our judgment. Mm -hmm. um, the reality is that there's a dark side to human nature. Yeah. And a lot of reasons why people may not be getting back in touch with us and it's not because they're being stingy with their results or that they're, they're trying to keep it close to the vest, but they may be discovering for the very first time that, that they're not who they thought they were mm -hmm. and reeling from that discovery. Right. So making, reaching out, trying to make contact, perfectly reasonable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if, if there's no response or if the response is, I don't want any contact with you, we simply have to accept that right. no means no. Right, right. And, and I, I think that some a, a case that that I've been working on helping a, a family friend who her mother was adopted and she finally agreed to to have a, an ancestry DNA test hoping to find something mm -hmm. and that's great from the adoptees standpoint but if there's a member of the birth family who maybe didn't know that there was this child who had been adopted out of the family and all of a sudden you know their their genetic match and they they pop up that can be disruptive on on the on the birth family it's, side it's hugely disruptive and and we really don't stop and think about this yeah. enough and it, it it truly happens all the time yeah. one of the nation's leading genetic genealogists as you know is mm -hmm. blaine bettinger right. and blaine discovered through dna testing that he has a half sibling yeah 
um, that he had no idea about. And this has impacted his own family. It's right. impacted the, the adoptee's family. Mm -hmm. um, and it takes time to work these things through. Right. In the past, if, if an adoption was ultimately discovered or disclosed inadvertently or through paperwork or whatever, mm -hmm. there was more time involved in the discovery process. And right. now it's, you know, you, you send off your spit and you log in and you go, what do you mean that's a half sibling? Yeah. And it can be really difficult. Mm -hmm. um, I think if we would just do a little more stopping and thinking, mm -hmm. but a lot more concentration on, on the golden rule, on treating people the way that we would want to be treated mm -hmm. if the circumstances were reversed. Right. I think that guides us into making good decisions, mm -hmm. more ethical decisions. Right. Right. Well, Judy, you've certainly given us a lot to think about, and it's it's such a, with, with DNA being so popular, Absolutely. And, and, and like you say, we get so enthusiastic about it. I think that you've given us something that we really all need to stop and pause and, and give good consideration to. Good. So thank you for sharing that with us. Judy, if people want to find out more about you, where, where can they find you? Well, I want to give you one more thing. Oh. And that Yay. is if they want more about genetic genealogy standards. Excellent, excellent, excellent. There is a website called geneticgenealogystandards.com. Awesome. There was an ad hoc committee that put together some ethical suggestions. Oh, great. And it's a really good document. I think it would guide most people okay. in some ethical decisions. So that's geneticgenealogystandards.com. Okay. And if anybody wants to get in touch with me, my blog and website is The Legal Genealogist or just legalgenealogist.com. And you definitely need to check out her, her blog, her website. She has fabulous information. Judy, thank you for joining us. I appreciate you being me. here. A lot of fun.